St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Mrs. Lorraine Cooper from Sudbury, Ontario. This Mass is offered in memory of her husband, Don Cooper, who died in April 2005, and her brother, George Noonan, who died in September 2009. In choosing to remember your husband, Don, and your brother, George, in this way, you are joined by thousands of people across Canada, and on their behalf, I thank you, Mrs. Cooper. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. The feast today is that of St. Cyril and St. Methodius. They're two brothers who were born in Greece in the ninth century, named Constantine and Methodius. Constantine became Cyril near the end of his life. They were missionaries to the Slavic people. Cyril is the one who uh, has his name put with the Cyrillic alphabet, which he helped create. They're known for using the vernacular in liturgy rather than Latin, and they translated much of the Bible into the Slavic language. Cyril and Methodius had much opposition, which was politically motivated to the point that they went into exile at one point. They were staunchly supported by the Pope, however. Eventually, Methodius became a bishop. Cyril was long an invalid, and became a monk near the end of his life. They were extremely influential during their lives and afterwards. In 1980, Pope John Paul II declared them patrons of Europe. And now as we begin the Mass, let us ask forgiveness for our sins and our selfishness, especially whatever is not what it should be in regard to our motivations for doing good. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Christ Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father, you brought the light of the gospel to the Slavic nations through St. Cyril and his brother, St. Methodius. Open our hearts to understand your teaching and help us to become one in faith and praise. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son and our brother, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a tiller of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel for his part brought of the firstlings of his flock their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain said to his brother Abel, let us go out to the field. And when they were out in the field, 
Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it will no longer yield to you its strength. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Today you have driven me away from the soil, and I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and anyone who meets me may kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. Whoever kills Cain will suffer a sevenfold vengeance. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who came upon him would kill him. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth, for she said, God has appointed for me another child instead of Abel, because Cain killed him. The word of the Lord. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons thee. Sacrifices, do I rebuke you? Your burnt offerings are continually before me. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. What right have you to recite my staff? Take my covenant on your lips, for you hate discipline, and you cast my words behind you. Offer to God a sacrifice of and speak against your kin. You slander your own mother's child. These things you have done and I have been silent. You thought that I was one just like yourself. But now I rebuke the truth. 
truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees came to Jesus and began to argue with him, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, he went across to the other shore. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus. By the words of the Holy Gospel, may our sins be blotted out. People are starting to pay attention to the process of filing 2010 tax returns. The financially savvy people have some idea whether or not their charitable contributions of the past year were sufficient to give them the desired deduction from their tax liability. The more we give, the bigger the payoff is for us when the government comes for its share of our income. That sounds like Cain. He offered a share of the harvest to God, but God did not accept that offering because Cain had ulterior motives. He seems to have been looking for some kind of repayment, a sense of honor for the quality of his offering. The sacrifice was not made with a simple desire to give. It did not arise from a wish to share the fruits of the earth with the Lord of creation. It was tainted by self-righteousness and a need for recognition. God saw this and told Cain, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. The Pharisees behave similarly in the gospel. At first glance, it does not seem like too much to ask. The Pharisees want a sign that Jesus is the one who's been long awaited. They don't want to be led astray by a false messiah. However, their motivation is not a search for truth, but a protection of their own reputation and honor, something to show for their efforts. Immediately before this incident, Jesus miraculously fed a crowd of people. When the Pharisees come and argue with him, demanding a sign, their blindness is not only their failure to pay attention to that event, but a blindness to everything that Jesus has done. Throughout Mark's gospel, they have ignored his mighty deeds. What more sign do they expect beyond what he has already done and taught? Actually, those Pharisees are powerful people looking for any way to bring Jesus down. They have no intention of accepting any kind of sign from him. So Jesus says, truly I tell you, no sign will be given. And he leaves them in frustration. We, like all followers of Christ, should examine our hearts to understand the motivation behind our actions. We must learn to give our offerings without expectation of repayment. We should pray without being concerned about what we are getting from it, what's in it for us. We are called to give our commitment to God without expectation of reward, honor, or recognition. Remember, St. Augustine said, a good deed is sufficient unto itself. We express, uh, sorry, we expect tax deductions for our charitable contributions. We expect the reward of eternal life for our commitment to God. But let us do these things not for the reward or payoff, but rather for sheer love of God and one another, 
from a desire to give glory to our God, who alone deserves all honor. And now let us raise our petitions to God our Father, that our service of God and neighbor will be motivated by love without selfishness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we will be authentic and avoid hypocrisy in our thoughts, words, and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those under the patronage of St. Cyril and Methodius, let us pray to the Lord. Lord On this Valentine's Day, that expressions of love that are so popular today will help people everywhere to be truly more loving and caring towards others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For greater love and appreciation and respect for human life from conception to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those suffering, especially those suffering from things like natural disasters, accidents and terrorism, war and threats of war, the injustice and oppression, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and injured and all who minister to them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those who've died, especially those for whom we've been asked to pray or for whom we've promised to pray, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And for the particular intentions of Mrs. Lorraine Cooper, the one who donated for this Mass today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. O God, our Father, We turn over to you all these petitions we've mentioned and all the other ones within our hearts. Please consider them all and respond to them in a way that is for our good, for your honor and glory, and for the building up of your kingdom on this earth. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divine life of Jesus Christ, who humbled himself by sharing in our human life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, may the gifts your people bring in memory of St. Cyril and St. Methodius bring us your gifts from heaven. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. With love, we celebrate his death. With living faith, we proclaim his resurrection. With unwavering hope, we await his return in glory. So now, with the saints and all the angels, we praise you forever. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, the death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin and Mother of God, with the Apostles, with St. Cyril and Methodius, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace and unity.
Jesus Christ of faith and your love and mercy. I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for sanctification? Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, fill me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come unto you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, may this pledge of our eternal salvation, which we receive on this feast of St. Cyril and St. Methodius, be our help now and always. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and joy of Jesus Christ to love and serve the Lord and all his family. Thanks. Our thanks to Mrs. Lorraine Cooper from Sudbury, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you'd like to hear again any reading, gospel, or homily from this week's Masses, visit our website at www.canadiandailymass.com. That's www.canadiandailymass, one word, dot com.